Gentlemen, again, my name is Michael Latronico. I own of Economy Plumbing. It's a fourth generation plumbing and gas business. And like I said before, there's nothing wrong with these units out of that box. I've done thousands of these units, and the only thing I've had was something dented. It's, it's installer error. Now, what Rick has taught here, setting up the, the unit, that is going to go with every unit, whether it's a NPN or an MPE or the new unit. But there's a couple of things that is like major. And this I hear through my YouTube channel for five years now. So one of the main things is that it's installed correctly. You have that booklet. You have the installation manual that comes with every one of these units. Follow it. You don't need to remember everything that he had here today. It's like an open book test. Just read the manual. Take it <coughs> on and it, get it right. After a while, you'll get fast at it. But you want to take your time. You want it to look nice. You want attention to detail. That's the whole thing. Because what happens is when these things are not installed correctly, it just gives this company a bad name. The builder, the general manager, the superintendent, get this piece of junk off my property, get me a new unit, get me another different unit. But it's not, it's the installer error. Okay, so what do you think is the number one thing that either you have seen or what we, I have seen through the years of troubleshooting and helping people throughout the world with this? What do you think is the number one? Um, the rust and corrosion from the condensate that drips down on the inside of everything. That's that's a big one. Water quality. Better than a wolf star. Misdiagnosing. Communication. Close. Yeah. Venting. Venting. Okay. Venting. Venting is part of it too. Venting is the biggest problem. And I can show you hundreds of pictures that people have sent me that a two-month-old Renan vented with dryer vent into the B-vent. Again, manual. It tells you. Venting this thing properly, whether it's this unit, which is fairly easy. It's PVC pipe, Schedule 40 DWV fittings. Glue it pitch it and follow the way they show you. In so, like when we start this, we mark it, we mark the pipe three inches. So we know the insertion is correct. Okay, again, we put some lubricant on it. But to take this thing and put it into B vent, this thing will fail, or that one, within one to two months. Because of the temperature, it's different than a water heater than that gas water, that 50 gallon that you had in the house. It's gonna take that galvanized B vent and just flake it down onto the top of this heat exchanger. Okay, the second one, the NPN unit. Let's get, let's get this unit over here. Michael. Yeah, that's a sexy unit. Right? Bring this unit because it's got the, um, it's got the same vent on it, even though it's the new unit. This one? I'll grab, let me grab this. That one right there. This one right here, the, let's just say this is the NPN. It's the new unit with the circulation. Do we have, do we have any concentric venting here? I don't think so. All right, are you familiar with concentric venting? Absolutely. Pipe within a pipe? Mm -hmm. All right, actually you can leave it, leave it right there. We can, we can actually see it. All right, <clears throat> their venting is all metal. You want to see a perfect example of bad venting? When you walk out this building, look to the left, and look at the four Renai vents sticking out of the wall. There's white and black. There's a black thimble and, and black vent. Are you familiar with Renai's venting? Yeah. Well, that white is not UV protected. So by having that stick out, you're gonna get microscopic cracks and you're not gonna get proper air intake. Also, <coughs> When you are going to vent a Navion unit or this, this unit, or which is, say, that unit, you have two different types of 
horizontal vent. You got an 11.5 and a 21. After 21, so basically it's on the wall, 11.5 will go through a standard frame house. The 21, you're going to need to go through a block house because it's a bigger, thicker. After that, you have to condensate drain these. Right here, it's a tough one. Hey, well, it's brand new, that's why. Right here, that's a condensate drain. Right there, you look at that unit. So if you go past the 21, so say you're going to go left or right, whatever footage. Again, in the manual, it'll tell you the footage. But let's not, don't worry about that, the manual will tell you. Even if you're pitching it, the condensate accumulates on the outer rim of the concentric venting. It comes back to the unit. And where does it go with, if it's not drained? It goes to the outer rim of the air and rots out the heat exchanger. And it'll rot it out with less than a year. So you have to either buy a separate condensate drain trap, which you, you bank makes one. I, do you have one? We do. Okay, so they have one. Hose, bottle, fill it with water, strap it to the wall, three quarter CPVC fitting, strap it and go to a drain. Uh, it doesn't condensate that much, but it does condensate enough it will rot out that. So that is pretty much a, one of the major issues that I find, is that they go vertical is even worse. And here in Florida, condensation, <coughs> now a condensate unit will condensate no matter what, what temperature it is, what humidity it is. But this, that concentric venting will condensate differently when you have a temperature difference like we have here in Florida. I got a question. Go right ahead. Um, for the V venting, I have came across the center, the cores for the intake. You know, the inside, the, the first pipe? The yeah, on pipe. the B vent. Yeah, so there's some that are B vent and there's some that are probably polypropylene. Okay. So does that unit require no. the B vent? No, on the inside? nothing. You have to run concentric venting through the roof or right. through a side wall. There's no adaption of that. You right. will destroy the unit within six months. <coughs> no, what I'm saying is there's, I've, seen, I've seen two different types of concentrics. Okay. With, with the core being like a B vent. Uh, metal. Okay, yeah, okay. All right. You're talking about Renai's B vent. Renai's, Renai's B. B vent is called PP. PP, Okay, yeah. where the inside of it PP. is a polymer. PP. And the outer is identical to... Was that funny? <laughs> hey, we hey, yeah. <laughs> the outer is identical to the metal inside. So if you if if you were to change that and have different, which we've had a build to do, you're going to get a unit non-condensing melt that polymer into the heat exchanger. That's what I was worried about. Navion is all metal, and it's only. It doesn't matter how much sticks out of the house, it's attention to detail. You don't want a two foot to stick out. But now the ons venting is metal in metal. And it's powder coated. Nice. But it's has anybody ever cut that vent before? I'm gonna cut the hoop in. We did. We cut okay. It. Well, it's a, it's special. The inside's gotta be a half inch longer than the outside. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah For insertion. That. You have to debut I mean it takes a while to do it to and then get it together and then the screws have to be put in all right now <coughs> will you see a Navion with Renai venting on it <coughs> yes you will is it allowed no it's not okay. they're venting but their venting is they don't they make a, a 10 and a 39 right 45 and elbow they don't make a 19 and that is the U-Bank thing. It's U-Bank, it's a German company that makes it, and I'm pretty sure it's made by the same company because it pretty much it's identical. When you say a 10 and a 39, meaning in length. this length. Gotcha, length. gotcha. Yeah, the other company makes a 10, a 19, and a 39, 45's elbows, and then different through the roof through venting, the roof vents, depending yeah. on snow load and wind and areas, and then they make an 11.5 and, and, and a 21. Okay. And that's because of, you hang it with on two by fours, on a brick wall, you ain't getting 11.5 through it. Okay. 
okay. you're getting. Um, but with that, with their venting, you can <clears throat> have a little bit extra sticking out. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Now, the other product we say is they take this vent and they just bring it over to the B vent with a Ferco coupler. You can sleeve it, but we remove the B vent. We don't use a Ferco. You can buy a poly adapter that actually molds with lead around the penetration, mm -hmm. stainless steel screws, and bowl, and it becomes watertight. You come up with your candy cane, we paint it black. And so for those of you that are not like to go on a roof, you know, if you go on a roof, you could do it. If not, uh, we use a roofer, especially we have a lot of tile roofs. So you, uh, we just go right up. We don't, we take the B vent out. And then we just go right up with the two-inch, support it like it's a, a, a vent stack from a plumbing system. But we make our candy cam and we come up about 20 inches above the roof. And we paint it black so it's unobtrusive. So that is the number one problem that we see. On their, on their um, termination that you get within this unit, you get two thimbles, four thimbles, excuse me, and two uh, screens. Who glues them in? No. Don't glue them in. Okay. I put a coupling on top and glue them in. So Don't glue them. Won't glue them in. What happens if you get bugs, dirt dobbers, a lizard, it dies in there? You got to break it out. You got to cut the fitting. Stainless steel screw. So it's okay. removable. So you can use. get a wire in there. You can clean it out. We got dirt dobbers and, and geckos. That's our main problem. So stainless steel screw. Half inch, number six, pre-drill, and put your stainless steel screw in the fitting. So when you're using your, and I know it's a 45, when you're using your um, fitting, that's it. Just put one stainless steel screw right there. And then you can take it out and you can clean, clean it out. Gotcha. All right? Interesting. Now, you know, it's common sense to, you know, it's not a problem if you don't, you know, you got to seal it. You got, no, no, it's attention to detail because you want to be recommended to that customer, the neighbor, and you, you don't want to anything, you know, not to get other business. All right, my second problem is the gas. And the biggest thing is they, they, everybody's tankless is yes, X amount of feet a half inch. If you're gonna go in and, now of course it all depends on the code and what your municipality, you know, your town hall wants. But what we do on a replacement of a water heater, God bless you, to a tankless, you always have a half inch gas line. We increase it to three quarter. And we use we use a full port OWG gas valve. We don't use the gas valve. This is a gas valve. This is an oil water gas. Look at the difference in the hole. The orifice. They're both stainless steel, mm -hmm. besides the handle, but that's the, the difference. We use, this will, get you th uh, this will get you half the way to the six feet that they want. 36 inch, easy flex, full three quarter inch gas flex. Not five eight with three quarter ends, not half inch with three quarter ends. Full three-quarter gas flex. Your drip leg. It used to be called the why well, it was called the drip leg was because the code used to have you go down to the floor with the cap to support the gas valve. And I had a 600 pound electrician pull up on a gas valve and shear the gas pipe right out of the aluminum gas valve. Hmm. So that's why they wanted it. But then they 
found that the thing would rot out. The drip leg is there because they used to have what they call manufactured gas. And there was junk inside the gas. So that junk would catch in this. This is what you want coming out of your fitting on the bottom. Right there. You want at least four or five inch nipple because you still get some junk. For those of you that <clears throat> do run gas, how many people here run gas? How many people here run poly underground? Okay. If for some reason you get some dirt, sand while digging in the hole, it's going to get back to the gas valve. It's going to get back to the screen that's up in this gas valve. That's what this is here for. You don't want this T down here. You want it up here. And that elbow we just put on just to make that flex. So you want your six feet, have your gas, when you rough your gas in, rough it in. Now, of course, with this, it's on the left, the one's on the right. Rough it in, put your fitting, put your valve, put your regulator, put a two foot piece, and then with your other nipples and that three footer, you got your six feet. That's really all you need with the gas. Okay, condensate. Michael, excuse me. Um, I remember that you mentioned before you're from New York. I want to I want to ask you a question. Why here in Florida they have two gas regulators, one by the main and one by the water heater? Okay, let's let's finish with that. Thank you for remind, reminding me. Do I get a candy? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I had, when I, was a, when I was in the fire academy, I had a chief teaching me. And when you answered a question or you said something, he threw you candy. Hey, you and I kind of adapted that to my, my class. All right. Regulators. His answer his question. Uh, show of hands, propane. Uh, and then natural gas, everybody else? Yeah. Okay. We'll go with propane first. Propane, you got a propane tank in the ground, whatever size it is. By code, you got to have 12 psi underground. So you got you got a primary regulator, which is red, and it was a tiny little whip comes out of the tank to a red regulator, and then your poly whatever adapter goes to the house. You're going to have a second stage regulator there, right here. So this would be a second stage regulator. Now, the regulators that I'm showing you are ones that we have had absolutely, positively no problem. So that maxi troll he showed is terrible, especially for our climate. Everybody's giving me a dead look now. Thanks, Mike. Sorry. <laughs> well, it's on the video. Yeah, yeah. The two PSI on the max troll is fine. It's when you start getting into the appliance regulators. Yeah, the yeah. Ones. Well, let me, I'm going to get into that one second. So you've got 12 PSI coming in, and then you have this regulator, which is a second stage regulator that reduces the 12 PSI between 8 and 13 inches of water column. If you notice what was set up here, that's perfect for what you need there. Then it would come in the house and then go to the appliance. You might have a uh, two pounds, so you have a regulator that comes up, reduces it now to two pounds because you got 80 feet of gas pipe in the house, and then you're going to have a two pound to inches regulator, which is this Pietro Florentine, because this regulator, opposed to this one, is strictly for propane second stage. This regulator is good for natural gas and propane from reducing from two pounds to inches. So all we need to carry is two, whether it's straight through or back mount. That's all we need to carry. That's all you need to carry. And now you have both regulators. So now you have primary, secondary, and tertiary regulator. What was that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a word for it, tertiary, whatever three is. Anybody know, put it in the comments. So that's what you've got to have. Now, with this regulator opposed to this, 
you need to vent it. This vent, they're not, and if it's not vented properly, the regulator doesn't work, that's not gonna work. So there's a specific way that has to be vented, how far from a window, how far from a source of ignition, and then how far you gotta bring it up out of the ground so that it doesn't get clogged and then the regulator doesn't work. Because it's not just a vent, it equalizes the pressure within this. We're not gonna get into the whole regulator thing, but you have to vent this thing properly. This regulator has, well, it actually has a vent uh, cap on it. But then you can remove this vent cap and put what they call, oh, look at this, I took a, a you can put what they call a vent limiter on it. But that's for inside the house. I find that installers put this outside the house, not the rain cap. This tiny little hole is what does, makes this thing not have to be vented inside of a house, but you get bugs in there. Tiny little spiders. That will cause the regulator and it'll coat out on a bad gas. Not saying that this vent head also, this rain cap will also you'll get critters in there. Another thing is direction. They send me a picture, they give me a FaceTime, what somebody I trained, and the first thing I say is, let me see the direction of the regulator, because I tell, when you're gonna install these regulators, you look at the arrow. Then you take a magic marker and you draw lines on it with an arrow. So that when you're installing it, because the outlet side is where the vent is. But if someone else is doing it, or you're not doing it, they might put it in backwards. So to put an arrow, because then, oh, the regulator's backwards, that's not, it's not working. But I find that they take these regulator, and they, do, they just screw it right there. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh. And they, not even a union, not, or the, they put the valve there, then the regulator. <laughs> I've seen. How the hell are you take it again? You gotta shut the whole gas line down. So see, that's the problem. Or if the regulator is right there, and on the other unit you get a code 12, this you get the gas code, you need to have that footage. So what do you gotta do? You gotta take track pipe and make a big loop de loop to vent this thing. I mean, excuse me, to have this thing correct. It's called regulator lockup. Regulators, yes, reduce the pressure, but when they're too close to the unit, especially a 199,000 BTU unit, they'll malfunction. Now, I know if there was some propane guys in here and they say, oh, well, I install them and they're only six, 10 inches away, and it works. Well, it's got 12 pounds of pressure. Put a manometer on there and watch when it fires. It'll look like the stock market going up and down. The, the numbers just go up and down. It's, it's fouling the burner. That's what it'll cause. That's why they designed this thing to be at a specific distance. Generators, some generators need 12 feet away. It's called regulator lockup. It will not make the diaphragm open and close correctly. Is there any questions so far? I just got one thing, Mike, one last thing. Um, I found that with the gas flex lines, you got to make sure they're rated for 199,000 BTUs because I made that mistake. Well, that's, that's exactly. Right. It'll, it says right on the tag. Right on the tag. It says right on the tag what it's rated for. How many BTUs this is rated for. People don't read in public. But, a lot of people <clears> don't. <throat> don't. Well, you know what it is? Tankless heat is, I put tankless heat in over 40 years ago in New York. They were junk. We took them out. I came down here, they approached me, I said, get the heck out of here, I ain't doing it. They gave me one, I put it in my house. It was great. Six people in the house, four women, my son and I, was great. And then I started with it. But now, everybody. But see, they're not coming to this class. And no other tankless company has done so far what I'm doing with Navion, coming here and explaining this. Because, it's the, there's, again, 
I cannot stress, there's nothing wrong with the box. There's a problem with the install. And if you take the time and read that and understand how to install, you'll, you'll never have a problem. So again, on this, there's a rating. How many BTUs? This is rated for about two, I'm not sure. I know there's another, when I have the box, but I think this is rated for about two, I can hardly see. 215,000 BTUs. So, it's perfect for it. All right. Um, condensate. Oh, does anybody know what this is? Test here. Is that check valve? Nope. It's called a Y strainer. And it's basically got a screen inside of it. And it's supposed to filter. These things need, you need good pressure. Their competitor needs 55 pounds, but you need good pressure. You don't need this on the cold water inlet. You, for starters, you're putting it in this way, and there's no way to clean this out, because if you remove this, you can drain it. If you can remove this, you clean the screen. If you can remove this in two months, God bless you. I'll give you a whole box of candy. You're never taking it out. So, and the reason I brought this up is I've been seeing these. Don't, you don't need a wash strainer. If you're going to do something, there's your, 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 your solution right there. Turn that dead switch off. Don't be turn on the pump. Yeah, pump turned on. Yeah, somebody wanted hot water. So don't use this. Don't use no wash strainer. All right? Um, okay. If you're going to put a check valve, what kind of check valve do you guys put it? What do you use? Spring check. Spring check. Uh, spring check? Is that what you're saying? Spring, spring check, check valve. Spring Not a spring, spring check, check valve. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. Spring check valve. You said swing. Not all. He <laughs> says swing. You got oh, okay. <laughs> spring check valve. He just wants another Only. Candy. That's it. Nothing else. Don't use the swing no. check valve. Who says you spring? Be, yeah. You said you're spring. Spring. No. Yeah. Okay. But some of those swing checks we found they rattled really loud when they were using They go bad. They, they go, go bad. they go bad in weeks. Dead. You cannot use a swing check. Yeah, and also that can be put vertical or horizontal. Swing check is horizontal. Well, yeah, horizontal. I'm saying the spring checks mm. rattle real bad. We've installed a swing check since 2000 with no problem. Yeah. And you can clean them. <laughs> those are improper. I mean been doing it since 2000. Been installed since Takagi. They, they, they don't. They want. They want spring checks in there. I mean, I don't know how yours are good, but I've never had one. We've removed hundreds, thousands of them, because they just stay sees in the open position. All right, condensate drains. That's a, another major problem. Is they do not vent the drain. So basically, it's this, coming out of the bottom of the unit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Of course, longer, but that's it. You get, this, you get what they call water lock, or it's um, almost like a vapor lock or a vacuum. Now you say, whoa, it's just a pipe. And what he said before is, I go, you know, you, there's nothing, there's no drain. It's just flowing the stuff all over the electric, the water pipes, the insulation, the gas pipe, and it's rotting it away. It's, you know, it's got to tie a city. But you need to install a vent. And this is what we use right here. Do not use a transit. So you're all plumbers, right? Yeah, you said. Don't use the transition. So the metal to CPVC. No, plastic. Plastic. It's going to rot out, fall off, or clog up. Now, most suppliers, we, I get them by the box at Home Depot. And that's what we use right under the condensate drain. Now, what I tell people in the colder climates is bring that out further because they need to be pour glycol down it, antifreeze or alcohol if the condensate drain line freezes. Now, the reason is that once it gets into vapor lock, it, doesn't dra it only drains an eighth and it builds back up through the trap 
through the pipe into the heat exchanger. And I've actually had where they were clogged on exterior units, water coming out of the vent. So it's extremely important to vent this. And at the end, cut that. It makes it flow better. And do it on the uh, relief pipe too. Now, we use CPVC. We don't use... The angle cut makes it flow better? It makes the yeah. pipe... What happens if you have it like this, it, it r rims out. If you have it like this, it flows right out of here nice. Oh, Just okay. like cutting the drain under a commercial sink into a floor sink. Just like that. It makes it flow nice. Now, of course, you're going to have the neutralizer wherever it is. Oh, there it is. You have the neutralizer. You have a bypass going through the neutralizer. And then, but this is at the top, extremely important. If not, it's going to, it's going to back up into the heat exchanger. All right. So excuse me, Michael, so do not use, because you know, most of the cases we use brass fitting or brass, don't you brass plastic, 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 a third valve, put a brass plug in here, with, because, and we don't have a dedicated, because it's not the pipe that you're servicing, it's the tank. It's the tank. So you put this on, and this is the competitor's one, yes, I know if anybody's noticing. Mm -hmm. um, we now install this brass plug, we come to service it, or we need the bucket solution, the two hoses, put this thing on, Bob's your own. So we've been installing these for our convenience. And, and like we got battery backups, we got Milwaukee <coughs> boosters. You know, the, we don't have the convenience of a plug. The All right, oh, just your grounding. Does anybody <laughs> on the well? All of the condensing units and the new unit has a plug. The U has a plug, but the other unit, the NP, uh, the NPN has a has wiring. Does anybody wire it? <coughs> Okay, well, it's extremely important to have a good ground. Absolutely. Extremely important, not just fry the PC board. We usually put a box on the wall. Okay, well, however, but the ground is important. You gotta plug in the garage, put your tester in it, make sure you got the two amber lights to the right, and you got a good ground. Hit a navy circ, there you go. That's what it's gonna look like. The new, as Rick said, the new, um, Fitting, oh here it is, comes with this, with, a, with, a, with washes, two of them and two speedies, it's going to leak. Mm -hmm. They're going to leak. So it. what you do is on the Navi Cirque, and you have the speedy coming down. So say this is the faucet, don't worry about that. With the speedy, there's your half inch IPS, 3A um, compression union. And then you make it, you know, give it a nice little loop. Half inch plastic strap will fit there, and you'll have a very happy customer. Not going to be <coughs> wet under the sink. So that's your um, the Navi sir. They and yes, they say one. We have done two. They work great. They work great. So um, okay. Um, that's, that's it. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. No problem.